Ladies and gentlemen, will you please join me in helping to welcome our next inductee into the Monster Truck Hall of Fame, one of the original wild men, Mr. Mike Welch. Well, just thank you for everybody that uh, that supported me over the years. <clears throat> Started out probably as the, uh, I guess, the biggest success story for a young man that, that had a hard time growing up. I uh, was made fun of my entire life, kind of bigger than the average kid. Didn't date much in school. Shop teachers told me that i uh, got to quit working on trucks. I'm going to be a failure. There's nothing I can do that would ever make a living. Pay attention. I uh, started with the first truck, and uh, they said, well, that's, that's good, a monster truck. What's that going to do? That's not going to do anything. And I got to, uh, got to run the first truck and a couple of the shows, and, and that worked out good. And, and um, it, was a lot of, it was a lot of fun doing that. But I really want to say thank you to my parents. Uh, they were dreamers like me and a lot of us that, that are mechanical and creative and, and all the stuff that we are as kids aren't always the best business people. And uh, so I never had any real good teachers with money and, and how to do things. I, I couldn't afford anything. And uh, so my folks were always behind me. Started out as uh, wasn't even supposed to be alive. I would have had a, a, an older sister. She passed away at birth doctor said you can't even have kids welches don't even try so i was i came into the life and uh, born 12 pounds breech backwards already started out behind and uh, so quite a success story at that alone and uh wasn't even supposed to be around so i, I tried hard i always had people that that believed in me and, and supported me. I, I, I drew pictures of monster trucks before there were monster trucks and daydreaming in school and I'd, I'd draw the pictures like little kids that are five, six years old now draw with the tires, the shocks and everything. There was no monster trucks when I was that age. And uh, so I, I got to do that and all the people that have helped, it's, they just always helped me that my neighbors helped and, and helped with money to get out of town or helped with some gas money to go here or, or helped here and helped there and uh, just kind of kept going. And I haven't always made the right decisions, but I, I had a lot of fun. And I wondered in my career of all the years of, of doing what I did, I, I, my biggest thing was so nobody got hurt. I didn't want to hurt myself and I didn't want anyone else to get hurt. And, uh, and, and that was a, a good thing. It, it's, uh, it's difficult to put it on the edge every time, all the time, and, and be so close. I, I remember climbing in the car when I, kind of quit driving, I climbed into the car as an announcer. I wanted to be a great announcer. Um, so I, I would do whatever it took, I thought, to give the crowd a great show. I remember climbing into the crushed car with the microphone, <coughs> laying down in the car, and said, okay, and I'd stick my head out with the mic, and, well, you can do better than that, bring it on right now, and I'd stick the microphone out of the car and let them crush me in the car. And they'd come back around and smash me down, and I'd stick my head out, kind of like a Super Dave Osborne. And I would uh, stick my head out, and I'd like, you can do better than that. And they'd keep crushing me in the car, and I'd lay down a little more, and then they'd come back around and smash me down even more in the car. They had it clear down to where you could only see it look like a little chop top. And, uh, you know, I probably wouldn't do stuff like that again, but uh, it, was, it was great. I wanted to be the best announcer I could. And uh, it, I was so shy in school, and, and I walked with my head down. I, I couldn't, couldn't really talk to anybody. I was just kind of a big, doofy, dorky kid that, that walked around and, and loved cars and built bicycles, and I carried bicycles into the, into the, on the school bus. My dad, we had a shop. We didn't have good welders. We had the old, old stick machine, and he'd only let me use wet welding rod. What kind of dad lets a kid try to weld bicycles with wet stick welding rods? So I had these goobers all over that bicycle. You know, I'd take it to take it into class on the school bus and, and uh, try to do the bicycles and uh, all the stuff that I built. But I, I've, I've just had such a great career. I've got to perform all around the world and anything I dreamed of, and I've dreamed a lot, and I'm the biggest dreamer there is, I got to build and I tried it. 
didn't always work. I'd go home and cut it off with a torch and start over or do this. And, and from the fire trucks to the super peats to the Red Baron airplane to try to jump the airplane into barnstorming, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it worked kind of, you know, and I'd go home and I'd build more stuff and try to invent things. And that was the true love that I had for, for the trucks and, and everything that I've done. That I, the, big, the biggest thing that, that I want to say is if, if the kids, and I've watched the kids grow up from the, the young children that got their picture taken in the wheel, that, that they're growing up and, and, and want to be involved in the sport, and some of them have, but it, you know, I'm a dreamer. I was the biggest dreamer of them all. They, they said that I could never do anything. It is the, for the children, if you want to be involved in monster trucks, there's a place for you in this industry. Whether, whether it's driving, whether it's cleaning them, whether it's being part of a promotion team, if it's in your heart and you believe you really want to do it, you can do it. Be around the teams, talk to people, stay in contact, and you can do it. And, uh, and I've seen it, and then there's a place for everybody that really wants to be in this business to do it. And some rise on to drive, and, and some are great behind the scenes people. The computer skills of today, there's a place for everybody. If it's in your heart to be around these trucks, and it's a great business, it's a lot of fun, you know, pursue it. Don't sit, let them say you can't do it. They said I could never do any show. Oh, Mike, he's a good guy, but he can never announce. Then I started doing the announcing. Well, he's a pretty good announcer, but he can never do any shows. He, he can't hardly add. He can't do math. He can't do anything. So I, I tried, and I was able to produce some shows. And uh, I wondered in my career, I've been so blessed with so many things, not financially, but so many things in my life of the fans and the kids and the people growing up and the, and the special people in the town to towns that I got to meet is awesome. And uh, I wondered how my life could get any better. Blessed, I've been away for, for a while, but this is it. And, and what an honor. And it, and it had to be so close for so many talented people in this business of near misses to be up here on stage in this first class of this year that I'm voted against. I can think of so many that from all around the country that, that deserve to be here and it's like I've packed along so many of the people on my shoulders here that the guys that sold their houses and they had only been in the business for one year, one month and, and, and all the stuff that makes this business great and uh, I don't want to die but if I died today every one of my dreams have come true from the little kid that, that sat there drawing pictures of monster trucks and dreaming in the old woods where I grew up and driving the trucks through the woods and smashing stuff up. It's been awesome. And uh, thank you so much. Good night. Well, you know, Mike, uh it's, it's an honor to get a chance to, to sit down and talk to you for a few minutes. We've had a chance to do a couple interviews in the past, and uh, I, I think there's some really great stories that you've had. You've told me, you've told on our radio show, and uh, I'd like to get you to share a couple of them with them tonight. Uh, one of the things I think that, that's really neat about your story is how you got started, uh, both in building the truck up on your property, you talk about knocking trees down, and, and then it builds into that very first event that you had a chance to be a part of, and you built the truck up towards that. And I thought it would be just kind of fun if you talked about some of the origins of Mike Welch and Monster Mash. Well, we, we started, I worked at the Wrecking Yard after school, and uh, it was a little 60 Ford pickup. The owner of the Wrecking Yard, he had a son that was about my age, and, uh, and I bought the old, uh, the old pickup from it. It had a Lincoln Continental motor and paid a couple hundred dollars for it, and I, I drove it around the street and, and uh, everything that a young boy would do that's about 16 years old, 15 years old, and uh, got out of school, graduated in 81, and... Uh, decided to start making a four-wheel drive. I started raising it up and I stepped raising it up higher and higher and uh, looking back it's really kind of ridiculous of, of how crazy it was. It was so tall that uh, I would pull next to cab over semi trucks and look down at them. It was the same height. It was just just ridiculous but when you're a kid you do crazy things and uh, I I remember taking it to town to go cruising into the Dairy Queen there where we went and uh, every single cop in town followed me in, state patrol, city cops, all of them, what in the world have you done? You just can't drive this thing on the road. We had a, a Chevelle steering box I mounted down on the steering axle as a reverser so I didn't have any linkage other than the box clear down on the front axle and a long shaft down on the tilt column and uh, drove really good. And uh, so that started there and uh, all the police came, they said you can't run this thing anymore on the road. So they, they, I came home with it. 
They did let me run it for one more week till they changed the legislation in Washington. They said these things are totally outlawed, bumper height, headlight laws, all the stuff. So I took that truck off the road at that point and started experimenting with uh, military axles, earth mover tires, uh, that kind of stuff, and uh, started crushing some cars right in the driveway and running through the woods, knocking the trees down, and, and uh, just, just a lot of fun, and, and that's kind of where it started. No money. Um, just working as a welder's helper and, and just uh, started with that truck and uh, and some people started they heard from it that uh, uh, I know Bob it, it was with Bigfoot there it started with the World of Wheels car show very did a lot of car shows and before the you know, the truck and tractor pulls they'd, they'd have trucks a little bit there mud bogs have a little bit there's no monster truck events and they heard about this hillbilly kid up in the woods with this thing smashing uh, Impalas and driving over stuff so they they came up on a pilgrimage up from the from the south to see this hillbilly kid up in the woods and they said uh, we'll give you a little cash and uh, we're gonna be your agent <laughs> Well, you can imagine how that went. Uh, I had a little bit of money, got the thing together, and uh, the first show I did, they, they took all the money, and, <laughs> and I said, well, it'd be nice to have a little gas money to get home. You know, you boys took all the money, and, uh, and I went home, and then the, 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 the promoter there, uh, Mr. Schoenhoven, uh, uh, straightened me out, and he says, son, he says, you don't need these guys coming in here taking your money. You work hard for your money, and uh, he says, we'll give you a tour, and, and uh, that's where, where I started with the, with the World of Wheels car show. It was actually the very first time Medford Oregon and and uh, started there in 84 and, and it was a paying deal and my my mom and dad and everybody we went down there and uh, did a car crush well that was a start monster mash and Mike Welch but one of the things I think people are gonna remember most about you is I mean trucking is a huge part of America and if you want to have a monster truck you got to be a trucker too and I think one of the most lasting trucks if you showed people pictures of trucks I think one that would always stick out to them is Super Pete and, and also Destroyer One. Where did you get the idea to make a monster truck out of a semi truck and uh, just kind of talk about the evolution of those trucks? Well, the, the Super Pete, uh, big fan of the semi trucks and uh, I've done a lot of stuff with semis now and the true love was really semi trucks. I, I started with dad. Um, I don't know why he did it, but he put me in a loaded log truck at 13 and had me come down off the hill loaded in an old truck with not good brakes and I got it down off the hill and he said, ah, good job, son, and there you go. So I was always around trucks and always driving and, and I thought the Peterbilt would be a cool thing. Mr. Sorensen, uh, he's 96 years old, he's still alive. Uh, that, that old 47 Peterbilt had millions of miles on it and uh, after the movie truck, uh, the Rolling Vengeance, uh, we brought that back to the shop and uh, Put it on there and, and it worked out real well. You know, I, I liked it. I liked the looks of it. That was kind of the transition of the last of the, the sheet metal trucks where you had interior and stereos and polished and glass and everything. But we were able to put the rear engine in it. Uh, I wanted the fenders to still look like a Peterbilt. Uh, so we had rigid suspension and uh, no suspension at all in it. So it bounced up pretty good. Even though it looked big and heavy, it was uh, relatively light, especially before any roll cages or any safety equipment went in. It was real light. So it, uh, it did a lot of stuff. And uh, the, the Peterbilt was very very popular, way more popular than I realized, uh, still more popular than I realized. Uh, that's why I've decided last year coming here to the event uh, really lit a fire for me and uh, told myself that if I was inducted this year I was going to get back into the business and I was going to give it one last hoorah with some state-of-the-art equipment and, uh, and really go out and drive like I've always wanted to drive and, and uh, even if I got to sell every, every scrap piece and every antique relic on the property I'm going to round up the money and, and put one good truck, not, not 50 trucks and not try to take every name that you could think of and build so many. I'm going to have a couple real quality pieces and and go out and uh, and see what I can do one more time while my I still have my health and my body. The return of Mike Welch and Super Pete coming soon. I, I know everyone out there is looking forward to that. Uh, one of the things that I think that people credit you with a lot is uh, in the early days when the racing started. Uh, sometimes you'd go out a little early and uh, then you'd come back out, start making some hits from the fans. As you guys saw it in the videos where you'd go out there and start hitting the car sideways, getting the truck up on two wheels. And, uh, you know, that's some of the early roots of freestyle in, in that. And freestyle is a huge part of our sport today. Uh, talk about how it was that you started coming up with the idea to do this. And I uh, go out there, I even started adding bars to the truck for this purpose. Uh, just kind of tell some stories about uh, freestyling and super peep. 
Well, just probably like anything, a lot of things come out of necessity. And uh, you can only take a 13,000-pound truck with one carburetor and 12 and a half to one compression without a supercharger and do so much. Uh, you know, it, it, was, it wasn't like today. So with the, uh, the gear reduction it had, it had the, uh, the big transfer case with the bull gear in there and it spins. And it was kind of like a gyro. So you could get it up and you actually would spin that thing to where it would lay down. So the freestyle started with just going out and wanting to do a good job. Uh, the best show that I could, I, and I liked getting the trucks up in the air um, for a long time, because anyone that really drives, you don't know how high you're flying. You might you have a good idea, and you can you know you're in the air, but you don't really know how high you're going. And and it was very thrilling to see the photos of how high that old Peterbilt could get up in the air. And uh, so I would back up at these races, and and it was going to be a loser. There's no way that I could could win a race. I think I'm probably in. It's just uh, amazing. I know I've never beat Jim in a race, <laughs> Dennis in a race, <laughs> Pablo in a race ever. <laughs> and I'm sitting on stage with the very best in the business. Um, so the freestyle came of that, and it was fun to do it. Um, the crowd liked it. It was stuff they hadn't seen, and even at my shows today, I try to put on a type of show that it's entertaining for everybody. Uh, somebody that might come with their grandchildren, somebody that might come to a show that's being a good parent, that might not have a real interest in monster trucks, but they're being the good parent, being the good grandparent, coming to the show, and at the end of it, they saw something, they laughed, they had fun, they were surprised at something during one of my shows and uh, that they enjoyed it. And that's what I've always tried to do is be entertaining. Like Jim said, you do, we just try our very best. And we don't start out to be anything in the business but doing the best we can and to make sure people feel they got their money's worth and to, to not hurt anybody. And that's, and that's the biggest thing. And I'm just amazed of the popularity of the old school monsters. Um, back when we started, we were all just so thankful to have a job. We were thankful to keep the tires on them. We were happy not to break a knuckle off. Uh, not to break them in half and uh, the, the, the kids that l love the old school stuff is just amazing um, I was very excited to meet the Anderson boys and to find out that we had something in common that that I watch their flips and back flips and all that on and I know everybody that knows me knows I'm not into computers at all but the last six months I've experimented a little bit and I watch these guys on TV and on the YouTube stuff and and come to find out they were fans of the super Pete and they watch some of the old nasty stuff that the old heavy dinosaur did there they that they would even find that interesting it's just amazing that the history uh, of the old school stuff that carries on to the younger generation and then the Stephen Smiths that that still drove some of the uh, the heavy dinosaurs for us uh, that uh, they love the old stuff and and I'm so impressed with the new stuff but there is a history with the old trucks and and there were so many great guys that that did the, the trucks through all the years and uh, just a great thing to be part of and you guys have done such an awesome awesome job I, I was a little disappointed that uh, his army never interviewed me once and I said finally I'll get one interview with Harmy Armstrong I'll get one in my career and then to find out he wasn't here so uh, I, I plan on coming back and uh, who knows maybe someday I'll get to interview him <laughs> so I, with that but thank you guys have done a great job and and uh, just an honor and a privilege to be here and and whether everybody in the business wants to admit it accept it like it or not we are a family with ties that go clear back to the very roots of this business and the generation after generation comes back it is an awesome business the credibility has come up a hundred folds from the old days of, of all of it and it's just an honor to be here Mike uh, I, we're kind of wrapping up here and uh, I, I just want to tell you we were talking before and you were telling me uh, about two things that I think are pretty important when looking at your career. And one is how much you were able to do uh, on limited means and also about all the people that have helped you over, the, over your career. So just as we wrap up, I know you wanted to take a second and talk about that for just a moment. Yeah, it's just, I, I, I was rambling here a little bit with the people in my community, but I, I've had wonderful people that have helped me, that uh, believed in me, and, and whether it was uh, a bottle of oxygen before I pulled out of town, or a bottle of nitrogen before, one tank of fuel, just come on, I promise when I get back, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you back, and, and these people were behind me from day one, and... Um, it was just awesome, the Bob Vanderplugs, the Fred Chokers, uh, the Halls. There's so many people that helped and families that supported me to, to get us down the road. And I just had always hoped that I've given back to them as much as they've given to me and the friendship. And, and, on, and on the closing, closing note for myself with my mother, um, she passed away several years ago. And uh, I asked her 
kind of Degrassi had the story about his parents said, don't get into the business. And, and you can tell by his personality that he would have been just one of the very best and, and such a showman. And his parents had said, yeah, stick to, the, stick to your job. Don't go out. My parents were the opposite. And uh, they were dreamers. They didn't have any money. They didn't have anything. And they said, ah, give it a shot. See what this thing does for you. You know, you never know. It might take off. And before my mother passed away, uh, she, had, she had told me that no matter what happens, money comes and goes. Uh, the more you have, you, a lot of people spend it. It, it, it just comes and goes. But she said, from, from me not being able to speak, I couldn't stand up in class. I couldn't do anything in front of anybody. I, I didn't speak good. I could hardly read or write. And she told me before she died, she says, Michael, she says, look at the man you've become. Take away the trucks. Take away everything. You've been able to stand up. You're a public speaker. You can speak. You handle yourself well. And you make people feel good around you. And you're a great friend. And, and I, I might be the poorest guy in here, but I'm very rich in memories and my friends and the family and the people that love me and help me. And, uh, and that's just, it makes me feel good. Congratulations, Mike. How about it? one more time? Hall of Famer, Mike Welch.